Hey, my name is Matt. Welcome to Ranking Tactics. And today we're going to choose a winner for our free lifetime deal for a Zim Writer. And also, even if you didn't enter the contest, you're still going to learn a lot in this video because what the contest entailed was having people write prompts, do some prompt engineering. And in the Zim Writer community, we call it magic commands, writing magic commands to do a product review. And we're going to review those those prompts, review those magic commands in this video and see how they fare, stack them up against each other, see how they compare. And then we'll pick the best one. We'll pick the best one out of the result. So we're going to have some constructive criticism in here. We're all going to learn something and there'll be at least one lucky winner at the end. But so let's dive into the contest details right here. I want to share with you details of the contest. So I wanted people to write a prompt, a magic command to review this particular product, a Sony a6400 mirrorless camera. And I said the magic command should be no more than about 300 words. The magic command should easily be repurposed for other products. The output should be around 500 words or less, give or take. It should avoid fake facts and it should not just regurgitate the input. And the fake facts is very important because a lot of times when you have the AI try to write a review, it will create these fake facts and it's just a worthless review them. And then finally, not regurgitating the input is very important. You want it to be a good read. Let's just go down the list of submissions and we'll look at their different magic commands that they created and we'll review them. Now, real quick, if you don't know what a magic command is and you don't know what ZimWriter is, this is ZimWriter. It's software that runs on your Windows computer. I am working towards a Mac version, but right now it just runs on Windows. And there's a whole host of features in it. One of those features is a magic command. Now, what a magic command is, it's simply you'll enter a command or tell the AI to do something and you highlight the command and you'll press a keyboard trigger and then the AI will jump into action and then carry out your command. So what color is the sky? That was our command and it carried out our, the, the command that we gave it. So the command here is obviously to have the AI then write a product review or recommendation about this particular product. And this is tricky to do because the AI already knows about this kind of product. It already knows about the A6400 because its data is current to about 2021, mid-year 2021. So the AI does know about this. So it can be tricky if people that were creating these magic commands only used this as their test and didn't go and test it on other products because we are testing their magic commands on other products too. We're going to test it on this pair of running shoes. We're going to see if their magic command is multi-purpose and can also be used on these pair of running shoes. And then we're going to test it on this smart TV right here. So it should be a very good learning experience. So let's just dive in right now to our first contestant. This is Sharon Bazil. I hope I'm saying his name right. So his magic command is here. So here's the magic command. And here's the output. Now we don't care about their output because we're going to, we're going to test all this stuff. Let's put his input right here. So this is his command. Hey, I'd love for you, and we're just doing all this in Notepad Plus. I like to work in Notepad Plus, but you can do magic commands anywhere. You can use them in Microsoft Word. You can use them in Google Docs. You can use them in Notepad. I prefer to just carry out my magic commands inside of Notepad Plus. So that's where we're gonna work today. So his magic command is, hey, I'd love for you to write a review article around 500 words for a Sony a6400 mirrorless camera that I've been eyeing lately. Here is the URL for this camera. And then he gave the URL. This article should cover the following aspects of the product under these subheadings. Product description, please provide a brief overview of the camera and its key features. User experience, is how easy is the product to use and does it deliver on its promises? What are some things that you liked and disliked about the product? Performance, how does this camera perform and how does it compare to other cameras in its category? Value for money, is this product worth the price and what are some of the factors that you considered in evaluating it's value for money, final verdict. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this right now. I'm going to select all this text and we're going to run it and see what we get. All right. So this is where the magic or the output is begins. Product description, the Sony a64 mirrorless camera is part of Sony's alpha series of digital cameras. It's designed for both amateur and professional photographers and offers a range, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go right now to this camera and kind of look at what we have. So we do have a Bion Z image processor, Bion Z, an ISO range of 100 to 32,000. Yep, 100 to 30,000. 179 point contrast section. Is that in here? Let's see here. 179. Nope. Contrast. Nope. 
auto focus. I don't see the 179. 116 frames in a single burst. Let's see frames first. No, I don't see 116. It could be true. I don't know. User experience. The Sony a6400 is easy to use and offers a range of features that make it ideal for both casual and professional photographers. The touchscreen display is intuitive and the camera is lightweight and easy to carry. I found the autofocus system to be fast and accurate and the burst shooting mode was great for capturing action shots. Performance, value for money. Final verdict. Now this is like it. I really do like this, but there is a glaring flaw. We're gonna go back to the rules for the contest. It's very important. And I should probably put these down somewhere. Here are the rules for the contest. No more than 300 words. Here we go. The magic command should be easily repurposed for other products. And I will check this on judging. So watch this. I want to show you something. And this is a learning experience if you're not familiar with AI. Let's take his magic command and let's open up another window. Right. We might get confused with all the different windows going on here. What I want to do is I want to, where is it? There we go. This is the running shoe that I mentioned. I'm gonna take this running shoe link. And I'm gonna put it in this, I'm gonna replace it, substitute it. There we go. Now I gotta change some other stuff out. So I'm gonna ding a couple points because it says mirrorless camera. Now we're doing a running shoe. Over here, it should be easily repurposed. There's the word camera in here a lot. So I have to change this out for the Brooks men's running shoe that I've been eyeing lately. Here's the URL for this shoe. I gotta find all instances of the camera. All right. Making sure it still makes sense. Oh, cameras, other shoes in its category. So that's kind of, when I think of a repurposable magic command, I shouldn't have to have done any of that. What I would probably do is refer to it as, a, as the product, but there's a bigger problem. And let me show you this. I'm gonna do a magic command now. And the problem is that GPT-3, chat GPT, all that stuff, it can't read URLs. It has no concept of what the URL has on it. It's not gonna go to the internet right now and read this page. Okay. Now, if that's the case, why does it know about Brooks Men's Running Shoe? Because we put it up here in the title. It doesn't, here's some features about it. It's the Adrenaline GTS 22. It doesn't mention that anywhere in here because it doesn't know that it's an Adrenaline GTS 22 running shoe. In fact, let me go down here and delete what we generated. Let me take out the name Brooks Men's Running Shoe. I'll just put down the running shoe. We'll do this again. So nowhere in here does it say it's a Brooks Men running shoe and we'll see what we get. How did it know? It took a guess. I don't know. <laughs> it took a guess and did the Brooks Men's Adrenaline GTS 21. How in the world did it guess that? What in the world? All right, hold on. We got to do this again. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> All right, let's try that one more time. Because I know for a fact the AI is not going out to the internet right now and <laughs> looking at what this web page is about. There's absolutely no way. So it just got, we got really lucky on that first generation. So now it says product description, the A6 Gel Venture 8. And then it starts talking about that. So the AI has some concepts about some of these products, especially pr some products, only some, that were released uh, mid 2021 and, and prior. But it doesn't know anything about current products. And the AI is, it's just like asking it to uh, recite some factual information. It's very likely to make things up. Okay, so we really have to be careful with that. So. Unfortunately, I have to ding quite a couple points for put a score down here for the fact that we had a URL in there because the AI can't read the URL and therefore it, it just doesn't help us. And it wasn't really easily repurposed because I had to replace the word camera with shoe and whatnot. If every one of these is out of 10, 10, 10, 10, I would probably give that a, a three. The output should be about 500 words, give or take. The output was good. I'll give that a 10. The output should avoid fake facts. I'll give that a three just because, again, it, we didn't feed any data into it about the product itself. All the data was based on that assumption that it could read the URL. Um, the output should not just regurgitate the input, but discuss the product features in a way that makes it enjoyable to read. I liked the formatting, product description, user experience. That wasn't bad. I don't, 
I wouldn't necessarily phrase it this way. If I've been to, if I go to a, a product review roundup website, I don't normally see it this way. Maybe I'll see the description of the product, uh, my thoughts about the product, and then some pros and cons. But I like the final verdict, and this is a good format. I like the format. But again, I wouldn't paste this necessarily into a, if we go to a website and we look for best running shoes. Most of the, the, the reviews, let's see here, will be something like, something like this. You have some basic details about the product, and then you have like a couple thoughts about the product, maybe three paragraphs or something like that. I've seen that done, and then you'll also see some pros and cons listed. So here's an example. We'll see a little blurb about the product and then maybe what it's best for and what you'll love about it and things like that. So th that's what I typically see for a product review. So I think I'd give the, the formatting maybe a six. Still very good effort. Aside from the misunderstanding about not reading the URL, I thought it was a good job. It was a good job. All right, let's do the next one right now. Let's go to the next entry. All right, so this is Toby Drysdale. Let's see, here is his Dropbox review. Paste it all in here, the verdict. So provide five website URLs that review the 86400 camera, list each URL along with List each URL along with a two paragraph summary of the product review. And then I guess he did another magic command and highlight the five results as well as the magic command below. Using the provided web search results, I wanna make sure I'm understanding this right. Provide five website URLs that list each URL along with two paragraph summary so we've already discussed that the, that it can't read it can't read URLs. I guess he's asking the AI to do this. Then highlight the five results as well as the magic command below using the provided web search. The resulting output. So I know this right here was generated from my from Zimwriter, and this is the output. So this must have been the output right here. This was the resulting output. Highlight the two lines. Oh, this is directions. Highlight the two lines above and use the magic. So this is the first magic command and to generate the URL descriptions. And then he said, highlight the five results. So go up and I understand what he's saying. So this is what he did. He said, highlight these two and run this as a magic command. And it should spit out something like this. And then highlight, oops. And then we'll delete that and we'll highlight the five results along with the additional command. And we'll run that as the next command and then it will give us this. I understand now, it took a second, it makes sense. Difficulty though is we've already discussed the AI cannot read URLs. What it can, it does know again about the A6400. So this is a, a sneaky test because it knows about this, but we're gonna use it on these other products that the AI does not know about. So let's replicate this. Let's go over here to new page, and we will try this on those running shoes again. Do the, that's all we'll do. So we just replace the title and we'll hit control one. And we'll see what we get. So we have an output now. Now it looks pretty good, all right? But the AI again, can't read URLs. Now there might be some URLs that are correct in its database, but I bet you if we go to these, there's not, they're not real. They're all made up. So. All this stuff, unfortunately, is made up. And so obviously, if we select this with the command down here, we'll get something that looks really good. It, man, it really looks good, but it's just not correct. Look, I, I want you all to understand something. This is a learning experience. We are learning how to do prompt engineering here. So there is, no one's screwing up. We're all learning here. Nothing to be ashamed of. This is perfectly fine. I am all for learning by my failures. I have failed so many times in my life and that's how I have learned. So this is great to learn this because now you know, okay? Um, so yeah, this sounds really nice. Did get two overalls, overall, overall. The only potential downside is that runners may find that the cushioning is not as soft as, I like it, I really do, but it's just based on, on uh, incorrect facts. So let's score Toby's. No more than 300 words. I like that, we'll do, I'm gonna just delete this kind of thing. We're not gonna score based on that. Easily repurposed. I'm gonna say a 10 for that. It was easily repurposed. 
should probably break this up. This will there'll be an easy. Uh, how do we do this? I guess I scored this wrong. Sharon's was semi easily repurposed. We had a we had to change some stuff out. We'll do a six for that. But then what we'll do is the fake facts. One, two, three. If this is one, this is two, this is three. That's four. <clears throat> so the fake facts was the big problem here. So we're gonna say, unfortunately, zero on that one because can't read URLs. The repurposing here was a 10. The output should be around, the output was good. I liked that, we'll do a 10 for that. We're gonna unfortunately have to do a zero for the fake facts because again, it can't read URL, so everything it says is gonna be untrue. So not regurgitate the input. I liked that. I'm gonna say probably a seven, just because it wasn't bad. We did get the overall twice in here. I really am a fan of the pros and cons or maybe some some kind of points, like, uh, you know, here's a, our verdict or something like that. All right, let's do the next contestant. Hope we're, hope, again, hope we're all learning something. That's the whole point here. There's no, everybody's learning something. That's the whole goal. That's the whole reason I'm making this video. This is Reed Florence. Read down here. And we are going to open this up and check it out. Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> you keep putting the URL in here. So I'm not going to run this again because we know what's going to happen. So we're just going to analyze this. We had a 500 word product review for this URL, break it down into benefits, features, USPs, and we'll just use the output and judge the submitted output because we know, again, the AI cannot read URLs. Wow, that sounds really nice. Features, benefits, USP. I like the little, uh, it's almost like a little bullet list here. Easy to use, flexible shooting connectivity. That's a really fantastic layout. I really like that. All right, so we're gonna judge reads right now. Easily repurposed. Yeah, it is, because you can just change out, change out the URL. So technically that is easily repurposed. 500 words, we have, yeah, we have a pretty decent output. I'll do a 10 for that one. Fake facts, fortunately a zero for that one because we're looking at a URL. Not regurgitate the input, but discuss the product features. That makes it, I'm gonna give this a very high, I'm gonna give it a nine because I love the layout here. This is really nice. Features, benefits, USP absolutely phenomenal this was something that i would paste on my website i just love the way it looks it's easy to visually scan as opposed to just a wall of paragraphs all right next contestants this is adrian sawyers all right let's see theirs uh, and everybody's this is good i am glad that everybody's using the url because now we all know it can't read the URL. Okay. Um, now there's no word wrapping here, so it's hard for me to look at look at it all. Let's put it inside of here that we have word wrapping, and we can we can look at this. 500 word describe pros and cons. Here's the output: introduction, features, and benefits. Pros, cons, conclusion. Easily repurposed. Not as easy because it we have the word camera in multiple places but it, only a couple places to change out. We just changed out the URL, unfortunately, but again, that's not gonna work. 500 words thereabouts, yeah, it's not too long. Fake facts, unfortunately, we're gonna have to score a zero on that one because they're using the URL and not just regurgitate the input, but discuss the product features in a way that makes it enjoyable to read. I like this introduction, features and benefits, pros, cons, a conclusion. Unfortunately, I don't like it as much as the layout for reads. So we'll say 10 for, no, we'll say nine for the repurposing, Probably seven. Seven for the repurposing. We had two URLs, camera in there twice. We're going to say 10 for the 500 words or less, zero for the fake facts. And I'm going to say probably seven for the enjoyable to read. All right, that takes care of that one. Let's go to the next contestant. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Visit this URL based on my information, write the full review. Again, I'm sorry, John. Not going to work, okay? Um, all right, Steve Whitby. So he just pasted his in here. And we can just look at that. Write a product review. Now, he didn't paste the URL in here, so that's good. But now what he relied on, unfortunately, was the knowledge of the AI. So here's the prompt input, and here's the output. So we can try this. So there's no URL in here, but we'll try this with this LG TV. Write a review of the, with a ready to buy buyer in mind, create a title for the review. 
we do have to edit this with L G O L E D T V. The review should be no more than 500 words. Use Snow White's mirror mirror on the wall as a whimsical style author reference. Include. I don't know what that is. That might that's interesting. Mirrorless, mirrorless on the wall. Mirror on the wall. It's interesting. Can we repurpose this for other products? I don't know. Maybe it's like a, some kind of literary device. Zero in on the benefits of the. So we got to change this out of the versus the competition's televisions. All right, let's highlight this and see what we get. When it comes to TVs, there's no so mirror mirror on the wall. Which TV is best of all? When it comes to TVs, there's no denying that the LG Top Contender, 4K Ultra HD. So does it have this processor, A7 Gen 2? So it knows something about these LG TVs, but it thinks it has an A7 Gen 2, that this is actually an A7 Gen 5 processor. It does have G-Sync, I know that. So again, the AI knows about some of these things, but unless we actually feed it some of the product data, all it has to go on is just what it knows in general about a similar product or something like that. And you're gonna get a lot of fake facts with it. Let's judge the output for this one. Easily repurposed. I'm gonna say six on that one because of the fact that we had to enter the product twice. We had to say that it's an LG OLED TV, competitions, televisions. And I don't necessarily think we should use that for every single product review that we do. So we'll probably do a six for that. 500 words or less, yes, 10 for that. Using Avoid using fake facts. I'm gonna say, Oh, geez, this is hard too, because he didn't use the URL, but he didn't really provide any background data on the product for the AI to use. And then don't regurgitate the input. I, I still really reads output the best. I probably rate Steve's maybe at six or one less than Adrian's. Good effort though. Now let's do the next contestant here. Uh, Matt Keys has his here. We don't need to run this. We can just judge mats and i can talk through it right now so easily repurposed he did the url also and unfortunately all this stuff is going to have to be repurposed for whatever next product we're talking about so if we talked about shoes we'd have to have all kinds of different keywords in relation to shoes cushioning support heel comfort and stuff like that so unfortunately that that's a lot of stuff right there i'd probably say this is a five 500 words or less of output that looks the output looks good avoid using fake facts unfortunately the only data provided was the name of the camera in the url so i can pretty much guarantee if we put in if we substitute in this television right here it's not going to have any idea it's going to it's going to start using these fake facts again so yes unfortunately we're going to say that's a zero not regurgitate the input let's look at how this is structured it's not bad i did i keep going back to reads like the different headings and the semi bulleted itemized list of different features and stuff like that but this isn't bad so we'll say that's maybe a seven let's do the next one this is ken's and everybody is using the url this is a good learning experience i'm glad we did this we should do more of these this is really good guys all right so we'll do the we'll just we're not going to run it because we know what's going to happen so we're just going to judge ken's right now Write an existing product view highlighting the following why this is on the top 10 mirrorless camera list. How this camera makes taking pictures fun and enjoyable. What top three features and benefits and why this is so affordable. Make it personal and sound like Ansel Adams. Easily repurposed. I think it's hard to repurpose this. Yes, we have to replace the URL, but then we'd have to, if we're doing shoes, we'd have to say the shoe URL. We'd say, we couldn't say mirrorless camera. We'd have to replace it with something about shoes. And we'd have to have this talk about shoes and this talk about shoes. But it's really not repurposable. If we were, if I had an affiliate website and I was reviewing lots of different products, I couldn't easily repurpose this just on the fly. So I'm going to say maybe a five, between five and six. So we'll just say six. The output's good. Everybody's yeah, doing good on the 500 words or, or about of output, no more than fake facts. Unfortunately, we're going to do a zero on this one because... Again, none of the specifications were provided and they just relied on, this is sneaky on my part. I let people just rely on the fact that the AI is reading the URL right now, the actual text that Ken linked. So it, it knows that we're talking about this A6400. I guess Ken also recited it down here, but it's actually not going to the URL. 
and then don't regurgitate the input, but discuss the product features in a way that's enjoyable to read. That's not bad. All right, we'll say seven for that. Next contestant. This is Jason Hicks. How many more of these do we have? All right, we can do it. I think we can do it. It's family movie night tonight, so I got to hustle on this. I need you to write a product review. It needs to be persuasive, but friendly, ideally. This is the closest so far to being really good. The problem is, again, Jason's just relying on what the AI knows. So if I swap this out for this, and I select it, and I run it, we're going to get those fake facts again. Or we're not going to, not really fake facts, because it's not reading a URL, but the AI doesn't have any background information. When you're writing a product review, you have to provide that background information on the product, some product details or something. So it's using the product name, but again, it's just making this stuff up right now because we didn't tell it. Does it have Netflix? I don't know. Maybe it does. It probably does. Does it have Hulu, Amazon Prime, all this stuff? It's just making stuff up right now because we didn't provide any background information on this particular product. So scoring this one, we're going to say it definitely is easily repurposed. So I'm going to give that a 10 right there. 500 words or less, we'll give that a 10. Fake facts. I'm going to say a 2 because they didn't provide a URL but he didn't really provide enough data for the AI to not use fake facts, not regurgitate the input. Let's read that. Reads well. I'm going to keep going back to reads. I like reads the most. We'll give this a seven. There's no glaring issues with it, but I did like reads the most. This is Ryan Leonard's. So this is the same situation with Jason. He didn't provide enough background information. He didn't provide any background information on this camera. So we're, he's just relying on what the AI knows, which which is going to have fake facts for it. The prompt is really good, aside from this up here. Use personal experience to write a detailed product recommendation, highlighting benefits in about 250 words. Make it relatable while being engaging and enjoyable to read. Include pros and cons and list bullet points and include the cost. Do not use fake information. See, the AI has no concept of what's fake and what's not. Then compare four similar products that comparable. That's hard, again, because unless you're going to provide those, that data on those similar products, the AI is not going to know. Provide a price, okay, avoid repetition, do not use fake information. Let's score this one. It definitely is easily repurposed because the only thing that talks about camera is up here. So we can reuse this stuff for just about any product. So it's definitely highly reusable. The output, I didn't check this. It does look a little long here. We put this into character counter. Check it out. Character counter, 381. It's not bad. It is long, but so we'll do 10 for that because it's not over 500. Avoid fake facts. Again, I'm going to have to give, I would give two if he just had this, but because he's asking to compare four similar products, now we're really just making stuff up right now. The AI is just going to totally make stuff up. Uh, so I have to give a zero for that. Enjoyable to read. It would be enjoyable up to like right here. I really did like all this, but then down here, just the pros, cons, pros, cons, pros, cons. It doesn't, it's not as enjoyable as it could be, I think. If we said make an opinion about this camera in relation to the competition or something like that. So we're gonna say, I'm gonna say six for that. Here's the prompt. This is Dolan's. More. Wow. I love the formatting, but again, the same issue we have because no background information was provided. We're stuck with just what the AI knows about it. It's not as repurposable because well, I guess it is for the Sony mirrorless camera. So it is highly repurposable. We can just swap that, that product name in. Love the output, man. This is giving reads a run for its money right here. Although Reed had some cool, I guess you call them headings and then some cool uh, different build outs down here. It's still really good. All right. Easily repurposed, 10. Output length, 10. Avoid fake facts. Unfortunately, I'm going to say a 2. And then easy to read, fun. I'm going to give it one less than, than reads. All right, here is Moots. Oh, no. I thought this was part of his prompt. I was going to say, oh, yeah, that looks awesome. This is the prompt right here. And this is the output I see. Act as a technology reviewer and write a detailed review of the... I like that he has the, the persona of the author in here. That's really neat. So unfortunately, it's not repurposable very easily. Highlighting its performance and suitability for various types of photography and videography. Please provide specific examples of how the camera can help photographers compare the Sony A6400 A6, with other mirrorless cameras. 
So again, it would take us a lot of work to repurpose this for a pair of shoes or a television. And then we know that because only the A6400 mirrorless camera was provided and no information on the product itself, the AI is just making up stuff right here. So this is Moots. All right, we have repurposed. Unfortunately, I'm going to give that a five. We got to change a lot of stuff out for that. Output length, good. Fake facts, I'm going to say a two and not regurgitate the input. Let's see what it looked like. I'm going to say a seven, just because there, I, like to, I like our minds to see some bullet points or some different headings or not just a wall of paragraphs. Entry from my side input. All right. Oh, man, there's another one. <laughs> Come on, it's movie night. Movie night with the family. All right. Assume the role of an expert reviewer that discusses main features in an engaging, enjoyable way, right in human-like manner. Not like the AI repeating yourself. Here's the output. All right. Let's try going a little bit faster now. It is repurposable. Just change the product name. Output length is good. Fake facts. We're going to do two. And not regurgitate the input. I don't know if it's a it's an easy read the camera overall. I don't know. It's not bad. Let's say a seven. And then we have a nods. Now this is actually really nice. He had some actual facts about the camera itself above in the background section or something. This might be nice. Draw from personal experiences and customer reviews in your search. Feel free to use metaphors. Use formatting to break up the text and highlight important information in your review. Provide your top three reasons numbered why you love the A6400. That's really cool. I think this would be a really, a really good choice if he had some background information above it. I'll put. That's nice. It's really short and to the point. I do like that. Wow. Easily repurposable. We'd have to he did have the URL in here. So he has the product name in here twice and he has the URL. Let's give it a eight. All right. Length is fine. Fake facts. Unfortunately, we're going to do two. And then the looks, we're going to do an eight. All right. Oh, this is Igor's. All right. Now I got to paste this in because I don't have uh, my breaks. Just looking at this, we have the product name again. Igor, he did a really good job of going into detail about what he wanted in the review. That's really nice. Um, delve into the camera's autofocus system, analyzing its speed, accuracy, tracking capabilities, connectivity, storage options, its memory card. You would have a winner here. It wouldn't be repurposable. But if some of these things like evaluate the camera's power options, if you actually told us what those power options were, then we wouldn't have fake facts. Because right now the AI is just making stuff up. I recently had the opportunity to use, I was very impressed. So let's score this. The repurposability, unfortunately, it's pretty poor because I'd have to change all this stuff up if I wanted to review a pair of shoes or a television. Length is fine. Fake facts. Unfortunately, we're going to do a two. He didn't provide a URL, but he just relied upon what the AI knows about this camera. So if we put in a different product or something, or if we asked it to review Zimwriter, it would have no idea. And then the output quality, I'm going to say a seven. Let's go down here. Just Oh, all right, here we go. Now this is what I was hoping to find. Let's go to the prompt. And let's take this and paste it over here. Unfortunately, it didn't capture the... Sometimes Facebook does this. It doesn't keep the, the line breaks in here. It's no fault to Simon. Wow. This is really good. I'm going to delete this stuff down here. So this is really good because he provided details about the product so that the AI won't just make fake stuff up. The AI has something to base its review on on. That's really good. He has some pros and cons. Now, unfortunately, these pros and cons that he provided are things he had to come up with himself. And that's, when I say something's repurposable, you're going to have to, you can't bust these things out really quickly if you have to come up with your pros and cons. I'm thinking more along the lines of, I go to Amazon, I yank a bunch of product details, I paste it in along with the title of the product, and I run my magic command, and it's I get my new pro I get my output. And then I go over here and I do the same thing. I take the title of the product, paste it in. I go down here, I paste in some details about the product, run the magic command, get my result. So it looks like he's coming up with these a little bit 
possibly unless it's at the website pros and cons let's see maybe he did just pull it if he just pulled it then i'll give him a pass but if he came up with these yeah then it, it dings the repurposability a little bit but this is stuff you could just pull from the website itself just select it all copy it bring it in that's what i'm looking for the keywords are neat but again this is something you're gonna have to manually type in so the repurposability goes down a little bit now let's see what his command is and it's really good that he has his command at the bottom and then the, all the other stuff the, the background so to speak up top because if you had this up top and this stuff down at the bottom the ai might get confused but a 500 word product review based on the above information lent excellent in the style of a cnet review the ai doesn't know everything but it's probably been trained it knows what cnet is it's been trained on some cnet articles that's really good and the first person with a witty and honest tone as if you have used and tested the product extensively wow so repurposability gets dinged a little bit so we talked about camera multiple times so we'd have to change this out for a pair of shoes this is a little long in my opinion i'm not going to ding him for it but i think when you get too many things in here the ai starts to not follow certain rules so just some advice but this is really good so let's select it all run the magic command now this probably is going to take a little bit because this looks like a very detailed magic command let's see what we got we get like this xga i'm sure it was written see that's the thing if you paste in the background information the details of the product it's going to use those things and not just make stuff up that's what you want to do this is awesome wow ready to kick your photography up a notch look no further than the sony a6400 mirrorless camera this amazing 24.2 combo center camera is a photographer's dream come true wow now we had a downside the only downside of the sony a6400 is its rolling shutter which is which unfortunately does not have an ibis is that in here rolling shutter does not have an ibis that's really freaking cool i like that additionally the menu is a little bit hard to navigate overall wow this is good let's score this easily repurposed that's the only part that i'm going to ding on this one i'm going to say seven because you can go to Amazon and paste in some features really easily, really quickly, but this stuff you're going to have to come up with manually. And maybe you, you think, oh, it takes me two minutes to come up with. Maybe it takes a little bit longer, but I think this usually takes a little bit longer to come up with. But you could, if you went to other people's reviews on the product, you could just yank this from their reviews and bring it in. So it's not very hard to come up with. This right here, these keywords, I don't know how long it would take you to come up with stuff like this, but that probably a little bit longer. And then unfortunately, he used the word camera. There we go. Multiple times in the prompt itself. Although everything else, though, it looks like you could just replace it. Focus on how this, we can try it right now. Focus on how this, how the shoes compares to similar models. Come on, where's the camera? camera and then we had one more camera i'll show you how easy this is we're going to get rid of the pros and cons get rid of the keywords we're going to go over here i'm going to say there's the shoes there we go and now all i'll do is i'll just take this stuff right here i'll paste it right up here now watch this now if he just had that and we didn't have the word like shoes down here this would be very repurposable very easy Oop, don't select prompt. Okay, ready for a smoother ride. The Brooks Men's Adrenaline GTS 22 supportive running shoe is the runner's dream come true with an updated midsole featuring 100% DNA loft. So you see, it's using stuff that we provided it. 100% DNA loft cushioning. You'll get a comfortable, soft landing every time. Plus segmented crash pad. Let's see if that's in there. Yep, segmented crash pad. Let's see is made in the USA. And so look, made in the USA or imported. Or imported so it may be harder to find in other countries. That's awesome. Absolutely awesome. If he would have just done that, if he would have just um, made it a little bit more repurposable, oh boy, that he'd be a shoe in for the winner. So seven for that, 10 for length, 10. All right, we have to go for 10 for avoiding fake facts. That was awesome. The output, awesome. It truly was. All right, let's, let's go to the next. And that was... 
Simon. Let's look at Susan's. So she uses the URL again. We'll score that. Repurposability. I'm going to say a seven on that because it looks like photography, Sony camera, 10 best cameras under a thousand. And the AI doesn't know this stuff. The AI has no idea about this kind of stuff. So it's just going to skew, it's going to add more fake facts too. We'll say word counts okay. Unfortunately, oh man, I'm probably going to say a zero on the avoiding fake facts. Uh, and then finally, the output quality. I'm going to say a seven. All right. This is George's. I don't want to miss anybody. That's a Make sure I don't want to miss anybody. That's really important. List of SEO keywords, including long tail keywords. The AI doesn't really know about that. Potential buyers, list of the camera's features and benefits. Explain why, what type of photographers and situations camera is best suited for. So again, not very repurposable using the URL again. And then here's the output. All right, let's score that one. Repurposability. I'm going to say seven because there's a lot in there that we'd have to change for the magic command. And then what was the next one? Oh yeah, the word count, that's fine. I'm going to say a two for the fake facts because it's just using fake facts. And then finally, the readability of it. We have, he made a title, meta description, and meta title. That's pretty cool. We'll say a seven for that. I want to give an eight, but the review itself, it's just a big wall of text. I wish it was more either shorter and easier to read, like kind of punchy, like ready for a smoother ride. Whereas it's just kind of like the Sony a64 mirrorless camera is one of the top mirrorless cameras. But it doesn't like, it doesn't just pop. Learning experience, totally a learning experience. Don't feel bad. You should have seen the prompts that I was making when I was first starting. So we did another URL here. Now this is Vons. All right, I'm going to say very repurposable. All we got to do is change this category in the URL, but obviously it's not going to read the URL. Output length is fine. Unfortunately, fake facts is going to have to be two. And the output quality, I, the cameras and photography have been increasingly important in modern life. This isn't bad, but you need to realize this introduction right here. Imagine that in a product roundup of like 10 different cameras or something like that. It could get a little repetitious, uh, but still it's, I like the bullet points. It adds that, that flavor, a little a mental, oh, hey, there's some bullet points in here. I like that. We'll say an eight for that. Let's do the next one. This is Paul's. All right, prompt. He has the camera in here, but the, but he doesn't have the, he doesn't have the actual product in here. I wonder, I think he might have left something out. Pros, cons. I like the pros and cons, but I think his sample that he's giving us is maybe missing some stuff. Target market. Very repurposable, but I don't know how to score that then. So we'll say eight because he's missing the title of the product. But is that like a repurposed thing? The eight for that, we'll say length is fine. I did, and then fake facts. I'm going to have to say a zero on that. But I did like the output. We'll say an eight on the, yeah, the, the output's an eight. Keep going. J Power, was that? That wasn't J, right? Wow, this is really detailed. I want you to act as a product reviewer. You're going to review the Sony a6400 mirrorless camera. You're in luck. Our hands-on review covers all the essential features to make this stand out, including a 24 megapixel APS sensor. We also identify. Is that the prompt? It almost sounds like this is the output. It's interesting. Overall, it's almost like you're rewriting the thing. I don't know if it has these things and we're lacking it in the details. I'm sorry, I'm just having a hard time following it. J Power. Repurposability, unfortunately, is going to be a five because it almost looks like you're writing an entire review about the camera itself. So we'd have to redo that for whatever new product we're going to do. The length looks fine on the output. The fake, it looks like you have facts in there. So I'm going to say four. You don't really have a lot, though. I don't know. That's hard. You talk about this Bluetooth, but did you talk about Bluetooth up here? I don't know. That's hard to score. And then the actual output itself, maybe a, a six. That was hard to score. I'm sorry. Sorry, Jay. Second, not as complicated. I judged the first one, run out of time to judge multiple. So this uh, looks like there's a lot of good background in here. This might be giving Vaughn a run for his money. So here, oh, I think he shared it too. Maybe it will be easier to paste this into back. I don't want to watch the intro. We'll take this. Hopefully we'll get the line breaks in here. Perfect. Here's our input. Product name. <clears throat> Cool. Important facts and features. The camera can record. 
Now let's see if he took this. If he took this just straight from the website, I'm gonna say A plus because then we can just take stuff from the next website. So it looks like he wrote this. Shoal or, yeah, Shoal. It looks like he wrote this, which, you know, you're gonna have to do if you want to review every product. And then maybe you're doing that. Maybe you have tons of time, but if you wanna go fast from a repurposability standpoint, you're gonna have to write this entire thing as opposed to just going to this website and yanking stuff and pasting it in here. Positive feedback, negative feedback, so I'm gonna say that the output is gonna be spot on. The output's gonna be amazing right here. Image quality, like this is a full review actually. How many words is this? Character counter. So we went over the character limit a little bit too much, over 500, so let's score him. Repurposability, I'm gonna say a five unfortunately, because it looked like all that stuff was manually typed in. So the repurposability is very low. I'm gonna to have to say an eight for the word count because it was 627. Not that far over, but it was quite long. The avoiding fake facts, I'm gonna say 10 because all the facts seem to be like he pulled from the website. So I'm gonna say 10 for that, but the repurposability suffers because he had to manually type all that in. And then the output quality, I like more information for my H2s. So maybe I wouldn't make these H2s, maybe I'd make them bullet points or something like that. I wouldn't really call them H2s though. I do like the pros and cons, but it's almost like he wrote an entire article about this. So I'm flip-flopping, is this good or is this not what we were looking for and bad? So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say an eight. All right, we're getting there, here's my prompt. Oh, oh Michael, here we go. Michael knows what he's doing. All right, let's see who, who's gonna win here, Michael or Vaughn. They don't need their output. Ah, gee, why is it? I hate how I don't get those line breaks. Key features, prompt. Product recommendation for Sony. So just replace that real quick. Tone. So you just have to replace these two if you're gonna do shoes. Key features, you can paste all that from the website. The average price for the camera in the market. Average price. Add, oh, add the average price for the camera in the market. So the AI doesn't know that. When it adds that in, it's just making stuff up. I do not just repurpose the content and discuss the product features in a way that makes it enjoyable to read. Avoid fake facts, five hundred words or less. And I'm sure if we run this right now, oh one, we'd get something good. So here's what we got. It took a little bit. Uh, as a photographer, I'm always looking for the perfect camera to capture those special moments. This is nice. It's short. It's sweet. It's to the point. That's really nice. But before I score, I'm just thinking right now, I'd have to change these two right here. That's not too hard. I'd have to change this. I'm not digging any points because I just go to the next, I go to Amazon and just paste in more key features. That's perfectly fine. I'm just thinking of stuff that I have to manually type in. Now this is gonna be some fake facts right here. We're gonna have to ding a little bit for that because the AI has no idea about the average price for cameras. The quality of the output looks good. I wish there were some maybe pros and cons and bullet lists or something like that, or something to stand out and capture my eye as opposed to just a big wall of text. But this looks good. Michael Ryan, repurposability. I'm gonna say nine. Output length looked fine. The avoiding fake facts, 10. And I'm gonna say an eight for the, no, I'm gonna say a seven. Seven? I don't know, we'll say eight. All right, the next, one. I'm trying to think who, oh, it was Simon. That's what it was. Simon scored really high. I was trying to see who is, who is in first place or second place. And then finally we have a deal. I hope I'm saying your name right. But a persuasive product review based on my experience, these metaphors give your top. But this must be the output. I'm absolutely in love with the A64 mirrorless camera. I'm sure you are too. It's like a dream come true for photographers. Lightning fast, good battery of life. Image quality is stunning. These are just a few reasons. It actually didn't use a lot of fake facts because we didn't ask it to use facts, but in a product review, I'd expect more, more details about the product, especially for an A6400 camera, which is over $1,000. So let's score this one, repurposability. We have the product name here, and then we have personal photography. Maybe I'll say an eight. Output length, a little bit short. We said around 500 words. A little bit short, so I'm gonna say eight for that one. The avoiding fake facts, this is a tough one because in a product review, again, I expect to see some facts about the product, but this is just very generic. So I think I'm going to, you know what? 
will ding the points under this one because it should discuss the product features. But we'll say avoiding fake facts is nine because I don't know if, it, if the battery life is incredible or not. So it probably made that stuff up, but we'll say nine because it didn't introduce a lot of fake facts. But then I have to really ding this one pretty hard for just because it's just too brief to really constitute a review and it doesn't really discuss any of the product features. It, discuss the product features in a way that makes it enjoyable to read. Okay, wow, um, I didn't anticipate to do, <laughs> do all of these. Let's pick a winner and then I'll show you what I would do. To, you know, I wanna throw my hat into the ring here, uh, but I won't try to win myself a lifetime deal, don't worry. It looks like Simon 310, so we have 37 right here. I think he's the highest, maybe, or maybe possibly Ryan 1010. Uh, and so, yeah, they're tied, 37-37. All right, Michael Ryan and Simon Eskrima, both are our winners, and they both win lifetime deals. Now, th this took a long time, and this is probably a very boring video for a lot of people, but I hope you learned something. The biggest thing that I saw that is a learning experience for everybody is the AI cannot read URLs. The AI cannot read URLs. It has no concept of what's at the URL. It might, and you might be fooled by that because the AI does know about some products. It knows about this A6400, but it might invent some fake facts about the specifications. In addition, if your URL has the product name inside of it, that can be a false flag. As an example, look at these two things right here. This, both of these URLs go to the same product, the LG TV. But if I say, write a product review about the above product. Watch this. The AI is going to actually read this text inside of the this link right here. It's just going to read that text that you can see. I recently purchased the LG 55 TV and I absolutely love it, blah, blah, blah. Now I'm going to try it again here with the same product. Now this will take you to the TV website. This will take you to the TV website. But when we ask the AI to write a review about that, it's not going to have any clue what this product is. I recently purchased this product and was impressed. It's, it has no idea. It doesn't know what this product is. We'll do it one more time. Yeah, it's just, it's like a, an agnostic review. All right, so how would I do this? Now, I'm just gonna do this very basic, extremely basic. What I would do is I would simply have some background. And you know what, let's, we can actually do it with the new background section. Let's try that. Let's go to our background section and we'll go in here and we'll just take this product review or product data and we can paste it right in here. You don't have to do it that way. I guess we could do it. Let's do it both ways. First, we'll say background. Let's just do it this way, then we'll do it the other way. Background, a product name, write a product review. Make this look the same. Write a product review for the product above. That's really all you need to do. Now, the rest is just gravy. What do you want it to be? And I can go to some of your things here and say, let's see here. Where was, I, I really, I really did Simon Eskirma's. There we go. Let's steal some of his stuff. Right in the style of a CNET review, right in the first person and with a witty and honest tone. I wouldn't take all this stuff in because once you start getting too much, then it goes off the rails. That would, oh, we got to remove the camera. Focus on how the product compares to similar. So I wouldn't say that because it has no concept of similar products. Now we could add that to the background here, similar comparable products or something, but it has no idea. We don't want to introduce fake facts. The first sentence should be short and punchy, grab the attention. The first or second sentence should also mention the product's name and expand each of the product pro. So we don't have that, the product to the product features in bullet points and discuss why these are benefits for someone who buys this product. Also includes what you love the most about this product. All right, watch this. Now, what I would probably do is I'd probably put output and watch this. Let's select all that. Roll one. Ready to take you running to the next level. The Brooks Men's Adrenaline GTS 22 is just what you need. This reliable. Now, it's not very long. This would probably fail our 500 word test. Write a I've noticed that saying 500 words, the AI doesn't do very well, but we could say a four paragraph product review and we should get more. One, two, three, four to sum up. 
No, it, it eliminated the bullet. Didn't we say bullet points and bullet points in the fourth? So we'll say this in after the third paragraph, after the third paragraph, expand several of the product features and bullet points and discuss. Oh, let's try that. So look, are you looking for a running shoe that provides the perfect balance of support and softness? Look no further than Brooks Adrenaline. Really impressed with the DNA loft, the guide rails technology. So it has guide rails up here. It's a supportive shoe. These are some of the different features overall. That's not bad. You can tweak this and play with this, but what I'm showing you is how not to use a URL and instead use background on the product in a repurposable format. Watch how quick we're gonna switch products now. I'm gonna take the TV. I'm gonna take this and put it right over here. Let's delete some of the stuff that's not relevant to the name. And then we'll go down here and I'll just take these features. I'll take these features and put it right up here. That's literally all I have to do. Now I go over here and I run this thing. All right, see, and, and look, look, so HBO Max, watch. It talked about HBO Max up here, 120 hertz. Talked about 120 hertz up here. Disney Plus, talked about Disney Plus up here. NVIDIA G-Sync, NVIDIA G-Sync. So that's how easy it is to just repurpose, to, to go and find a brand new product. We'll go on bestsellers. Go over here and we'll look at this shirt. So here's a shirt, Amazon Essentials shirt. And then we'll go down here and we'll say, here are the background details. We'll say, write a product review. Probably wouldn't do a CNET review for this one. Look at that. Now it, this review will, this magic command we have, this format we have will do anything and very quickly. Now, if you wanna use the advanced Zen Writer features, what we can do is we can take the, this advanced stuff and we can say, let's save this right here as our magic command. There we go. And we will save this. Actually, let's erase all save magic commands. I'm going to save this as product review. We'll assign it to the trigger number four. And then what we can do is, and we can do multiple things. All right. We can simply, we can do this. I'm trying to think how to, there's so many different options we can have right now. So I can say, let's do it like this. There. I can literally, I think this will work. Go to Amazon. Take the product name, put it down below, put the product features up top. And I bet you, if I just select this and hit control four, I think we selected control four, didn't we for this? There you go, see? Now we've tied our magic command to this thing over here, this product review. Now, if you really wanna get crazy, we can say we want literary devices, we want lists, we want a very personal tone of voice, we could boost the chance of detection too, and we'll say a hero personality, and we'll use the settings when this is closed. Now we'll close this. And then we can use all those settings with this product review magic command when we hit control four. There you go. All right. Now there is a background section in here, and you could put this stuff in the background, but I don't recommend it because if you put this in the background section over here, the magic command only works, the control four only works if you highlight something. So what are you gonna highlight? And we have our command, right? The review, and we have our background. There's really nothing left to highlight here. So this is a situation where I would not put this information into the background. Now there's are, there are situations, we did a demonstration a couple days ago about a, this doing a service review, reviewing a particular service, and this would be background on the company. And then I would say, write, oops, write about our carpet cleaning service. If you're not following me at all, we could say like this, write a Facebook post. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Facebook, we'll assign this to control five. We'll go to Denver pros and we'll take this stuff here. We'll go to the about us. This is some more background on the company. I'll save it all to Denver Pros. And so now what we can do, this would be a perfect reason to use all three of these. We're going to select this text and hit control five, which is going to write a Facebook post about our carpet cleaning service using this background information. So using this background information is not, you don't want to do it all the time. You want to use it in, in the right situation, but this is a perfect situation where you would want to use it, but you wouldn't necessarily want to use it for doing what we were just doing a minute ago, which was the product reviews. So 
I hope you all learned something. This was a, definitely a long video. If you stuck around for the whole thing, give yourself a pat on the back. Drop a comment down below if this was helpful. Please subscribe, like the video, and the winners, again, the winners of the free lifetime deals are Simon Eskirma and Michael Ryan. Congratulations to both of you. You can get a copy of ZimWriter in the description below. There's a special lifetime deal for it at a special limited time price. Definitely take advantage of that before it expires. Other than that, good luck with your content generation, and I'll talk to you later.